Good evening and welcome. Tonight, friends again, what the government's deal with Facebook means for your news feed. A boost for job seekers, but there's a catch. Gemma Acton will explain that. The return to normal, why Queensland's Anzac Day parade has the all clear despite the pandemic. Go live to Brisbane. The fresh push for AFL stars to donate their brains for concussion research. Tom Brown joins me. Out of the White House and into the frying pan, could Donald Trump's tax returns land him in jail? And is there life on Mars? We're one step closer to finding out tonight. The Australian scientist leading NASA's mission joins us. The latest from 7 News with Michael Usher. Facebook has agreed to lift its block on Australian news sites after a five-day blackout. Here's what the Treasurer had to say about the social media sites backflip a little earlier. Well, Facebook has refriended Australia and Facebook has committed to entering into good faith negotiations with Australian news media businesses in seeking to reach agreements to pay for content. And our political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra tonight. Olivia, good evening to you. What does it mean for users? And there's a bit of news about us. Already a deal's been done. Yeah, well, if you use Facebook, you'll start seeing news stories appear on your Facebook feed. Once again, Facebook has settled its bitter dispute with the federal government, agreeing to pay for news content. And the owners of this channel, Seven West Media, has become the first major Australian media outlet to lock in a commercial deal with Facebook, though the details yet to be revealed. Now, this is just hours after the government agreed to some last-minute changes to the proposed media bargaining code and as well Facebook lifting its news ban in return though it did take some six phone calls between the Treasurer and Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg just over the past two days. Seven was also the first media co company to strike a similar deal with Google just last week and we expect there'll be more agreements with other media outlets on the way Michael. Yeah I'd imagine a busy night of negotiations ahead. Uh, Olivia look it was all happening in Parliament House today meanwhile the Liberal Party's federal majority is uh, hanging in the balance tonight uh, with the member Craig Kelly quitting to move to the crossbench. What does that mean for Scott Morrison's government? Well, it's certainly very embarrassing for the Prime Minister. It's cost the government its majority on the floor of the House of Representatives, now locked at 75 all, not including the Speaker. Though Craig Kelly has indicated that he'll largely vote with the government, that he has resigned so that he can speak openly about issues like the unproven COVID treatments that he's been spruiking on his Facebook page, contradicting the government's own health advice. Now, he was also facing a possible pre-selection defeat, uh, creating controversy recently with his run-in in the corridor with Tanya Plibersek, one of his staffers, Frank Zumbo, who's being investigated for sexual harassment allegations. Now, I understand that Mr Kelly has been in talks about possibly joining a minor party, including the Great Australian Party, which uh, anti-vaxxer, former celebrity chef Pete Evans, has announced he will be running as a candidate for in the next election. Though for now, Craig Kelly remains an independent. Michael? Like I said, it was all happening in Canberra today. Olivia Leeming, thank you. The Cabinet has approved a permanent rise in the unemployment benefit job seeker payment, along with a strict list of rules for those claiming the benefit. Take a listen to the Prime Minister speaking earlier. We've also formed the view that that base level of support that exists within our social safety net needs to be adjusted for the long term. So we are moving from short-term emergency measures to long-term arrangements now that people can rely on should they find themselves out of work. Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton joins me now. Gem, good evening to you. Talk us through these changes. Hi, Michael. So before coronavirus, it was $40 a day for the jobless benefit. Uh, there was a coronavirus supplement added to that from the height of the pandemic in April last year, which was $550 a fortnight, effectively doubling the rate. Now that's worked its way down to be around $150 a fortnight extra now and that expires entirely on the 31st of March. So today the government introduced a permanent increase to the unemployment benefit as of April the 1st uh, which will be $50 a fortnight, in other words $3.57 a day. So the total unemployment benefit will be still under $44 a day right. and they have to work harder for it. You're going to need to do uh, more face-to-face -face interviews with employers, apply for up to 20 jobs a month in July, sorry at least 20 yeah. jobs a month in July and if you refuse a job the employer can call a new hotline to report you.
no doubt a lot of reaction today. What's, what's it been? A lot of reaction, a lot of disappointment. People have been calling for an increase to the jobless benefit for years and this is certainly not what they had in mind. And those calls have come across the political spectrum for a variety of reasons, whether it's an economic rationale uh, insofar as people on lower incomes tend to spend an extra dollar more than people on higher incomes do, whether it's for simple dignity, uh, human rights, or whether it's for fairness, which is something the Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe called for a couple of weeks. Mm. Ago. There's also the argument that you cannot put your best foot forward in a job interview if you haven't had a decent meal, a decent sleep, you don't feel decently attired. Yeah. Now the government has said, look, we want to make sure that people are still incentivised to go out and hunt for jobs and no matter what level we, we set it at, there would be people who are disappointed. Um, but certainly I don't think that when people have been calling for an increase that $3.57 is, is what they were looking for. Doesn't seem like much at all. It doesn't, though. No. All right, Gemma, thank you. Thanks, Michael. Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews has threatened to strip Crown Casino of its gambling licence if the Royal Commission recommends it. Some of Labor's critics have described this as unlikely given the company's job tally in the state. The Commission must report back to the state government by August the 1st. Defence Minister Linda Reynolds has been accused of changing her story about the days following the alleged rape of Brittany Higgins. The minister has been forced tonight to correct her statement after she falsely claimed to have met with Australian Federal Police twice in the immediate aftermath. In fact, the meeting took place four days later at the AFP's request. Well, as we go to where Melbourne health officials are tackling an outbreak of a flesh-eating bacteria. Tegan Doling is live in Melbourne for us tonight. Tegan, good evening to you. What is this bacteria? Michael, it's known as a Barooli ulcer and it's often found down our surf coasts, so down the Bellarine and Mornington Peninsula. And this is actually the first time that it's been found in an inner city suburb. So the warning went out this afternoon to residents uh, in Mooney Ponds, in Essendon and in Brunswick West. And the message was to make sure that if you go outside that you use a, an insect repellent and to make sure that bugs aren't getting inside your home. Now that's because they've had several cases in these couple of suburbs over the last few few weeks, 20 cases across the state of this flesh eating bacteria and that's actually double compared to the same time last year. Now how it all works Michael, it often starts out as almost like a small mosquito bite and it can actually be uh, treated quite easily mm. and quite effectively just with the use of antibiotics. But what we've seen in some patients, it starts to get nasty if it's left untreated and that's where that flesh eating bacteria uh, starts to grow. We've seen uh, quite uh, large ulcers in people's arms and legs, even to the point, Michael, where they've had to get amputation. So it can get really quite serious. Mm. So the warning is to make sure always using bug repellent in those three areas uh, in particular because experts were saying for the chief health officer was saying that Michael although it can be quite rare it's definitely uh, a bacteria that you want to try to avoid. Goodness me Tegan if Victorians haven't been through enough during the past year now this <laughs> all right Tegan Dolly <laughs> Melbourne thank you for that tonight. Well Anzac Day is returning to normal in Queensland this year Alex Lewis has the latest in Brisbane tonight Alex good evening to you the the Sunshine States made the call ahead of the rest of the country. Well, Michael, it'll be the largest public event since the start of the pandemic. There's no requirement to wear a mask or to check in. Our Chief Health Officer, Dr Jeanette Young, says basically open-air events such as parades and services can, can carry on with a very low risk of transmission. Uh, there had been contingency plans to hold a scaled-back service here at Anzac Square as well as using stadiums and showgrounds for the parades, but Dr Young says that's simply not necessary. In fact, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk is urging Queenslanders to come out in force to, to pay their respects this year. A stark contrast to last year, the messaging was to stay at home and light a candle from your driveway. But last year there were some 270 cases of coronavirus on Anzac Day in Queensland. Today there were just seven, all in hotel quarantine and no community transmission. And of course the other key difference is the vaccine. Uh, Queensland has just wrapped up its second day of vaccinations and Dr Young says regardless of how many of us have received the jab by Anzac Day, the events will still go ahead, Michael. Yeah, Alex, a very positive response from RSLs across the state. Let's hear now from uh, one president. The meeting with mates is vitally important, not only from, uh, I suppose, a traditional point of view, but uh, for many, many of them who uh, perhaps are not travelling so well, this is an important day psychologically and mentally. All right, Alex, there's one event, however, that won't be going ahead as normal. What's that? 
Well, that's right, Michael. That's the uh, dawn service at Elephant Rock in Corumban on the Gold Coast, arguably the most iconic dawn service in Queensland. Uh, that won't be open to the public this year, not because of COVID restrictions, but because uh, it takes six months to plan and organisers simply don't have enough time. But 1,500 veterans and carers will still be invited to take part in, part in the spine-tingling ceremony against uh, a backdrop unlike any other. Uh, anyway, you look at it, Michael, it's a huge step in the right direction. An extraordinary location, that amazing service. All right, Alex Lewis in Brisbane tonight, thank you for that. A dash cam has captured a terrifying highway hit and run near Newcastle. The truck driver ploughed into the back of this Mazda but failed to stop at the scene. The driver of a Sydney rubbish truck has been charged on several counts tonight relating to the death of an elderly woman this morning. Harrowing footage shows the moment she was struck and killed when the truck turned in Chester Hill. Officers are appealing for help in identifying the victim. And supermarket customers have been warned about a chemical contamination in a popular tea brand. Narada Organics Lemon and Ginger Herbal Infusion Tea has been removed from shelves. Consumers can return the product for a refund. The United States has now surpassed half a million COVID-19 deaths. The very dark milestone was marked with a candle lighting ceremony in Washington, D.C. The country with the second highest death toll is Brazil with uh, half that amount of casualties, but there remains a sense of optimism across the USA with new cases, hospitalisations and deaths taking a sharp downturn thanks to the vaccine rollout. Donald Trump must turn over his tax records to New York prosecutors. That was today's decision from the US Supreme Court. Simon Jackman from the United States Study Centre joins me now. Simon, good to see you again. Uh, how significant is this today? It's really significant in that what they've gone after now are the documents behind the tax returns. And that are the, that's the crown jewels. Right that how we got to the bottom line tax results that Donald Trump is claiming, there's a lot more detail in the records they've got from Trump's accountants. And that's what I think why prosecutors were so adamant to get their hands on this cache of documents. What's it going to reveal? What are, we, what are they searching for here? The New York Times has already done a good job on lying, laying out what's in the tax returns per se. Mm -hmm. Here is what's behind the line items. How is it that Donald Trump got to so much uh, uh, in personal tax deductions mm -hmm. that he was av uh, able to avoid paying a lot of tax uh, over the years in question. Mm -hmm. And th that peering behind the curtain as to what was the business activity, where was the money coming from, rather than the rather summary form that the New York Times has already mm -hmm. treated us to. And like I said, that's where they start to unpick the tangled web that is the Trump business empire and start to see where the left hand might have been paying the right hand and, and so on. All right, so they're getting more forensic. This is a long time coming though. Why the delay? It's really interesting, Michael. I think the Supreme Court, by the way, that ruled today, this was a slam dunk decision. This was a summary judgment. There are no opinions issued. They've been sitting on the case that they ended up ruling with a one line ruling, dismissed, denied, since mid October. So I think the Supreme Court yeah, I think the Supreme yeah. Court was keen to right. see the election go by, number one. And and this is dragging out, no doubt. Um, but I think they're much more comfortable saying that a former president yeah. has to hand over this incredible wealth of information than a, and a current sitting president. Not necessarily going to be released public, though, either. Is that no, right? this it, goes it, first to a grand jury, yeah. right? So we're not going to see this unless the, the grand jury process leaks. We're not going to see this unless, and it's increasingly likely, Michael, that this yeah. goes to trial. Yeah. And, but right now we're still in the investigation indictment phase, so nothing for us mere civilians right, just yeah. yet. Now New York isn't the only state uh, launching legal action against Mr Trump. His lawyers have been kept pretty busy at the moment. Yeah, so there's a criminal investigation underway in the state of Georgia around potential election interference, and there is that longer standing issue out of New York State around the activities of the Trump organisation that now links to the document mm. dump that they just got today, in particular consultant fees paid to Ivanka Trump uh, while she was an employee of the Trump organisation. Very briefly, uh, he's not been quiet over. We're, we're expecting a major speech from Donald Trump soon, aren't we? Yeah, CPAC, the big Conservative Political Action Committee conference. It's the must-go event for any uh, aspiring conservative American politician. Trump is back, prime time, closing the conference there on Sunday night. Mike Pence is not. There you go. All right, Simon Jackman, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Tonight, the wife of infamous Mexican drug cartel leader El Chapo has been arrested on international drug trafficking charges. A dual US Mexican citizen, 31 year old Emma Coronel Espero, was detained at an airport in Virginia. She's expected to appear in federal court in Washington tomorrow. 
Unusually cold weather in Texas has killed dozens of people, including an 11-year-old boy. Christian Pineda was found unresponsive under a pile of blankets in his family's motorhome. Recent heavy snow knocked out the power for millions of residents. The boy's family have filed a lawsuit against Texan power companies for negligence. And tonight, rescuers have successfully saved around 28 pilot whales found stranded on a notorious stretch of New Zealand's coast. A human chain of around 150 volunteers guided the animals back out to sea in chest deep water after successfully refloating them at high tide. However, conservation experts say there is still a risk they could beach themselves again. One week since Prince Philip was admitted to hospital, the Queen has yet to visit his bedside. Let's cross live to Europe correspondent Sarah Greenolch. Sarah, good evening to you. It's morning there in London. Have we heard an update on Philip's health? Michael, good evening. It is day eight of Prince Philip being in hospital and still we have heard nothing official from Buckingham Palace. There are certainly a lot of questions. So members of various media organisations from around the world are all camped out here at the King Edward VII Hospital waiting to see if there is any fresh details, uh, waiting to see if anyone else shows up. We, of course, had that surprise visit by Prince Charles over the weekend. That was very unexpected and raised uh, a lot of speculation. Uh, and waiting to see if Prince Philip uh, is discharged because that is also possibly an option. The last time we heard anything from the palace officially in the form of a statement was last Wednesday uh, when they said that the Duke of Edinburgh had been admitted on Tuesday evening. It was said to be a precautionary measure on the advice of his doctors. He was going to be here for just a couple of days for some observation and rest. But they didn't say exactly what the illness was for. They did, Michael, uh, take the unusual step of assuring everyone that it wasn't related to COVID-19. And I think that's something they probably needed to do, uh, knowing that that would be an inevitable question given the context of what has been happening in this country over the past 12 months. The infection rates here are still quite high. Uh, Boris Johnson only yesterday releasing a roadmap for easing the country out of lockdown and that in itself is a, a very slow process. Prince Philip did have his uh, first COVID-19 vaccination along with the Queen at Windsor Castle last month. They were administered by household doctors and Windsor Castle is where the couple uh, has spent the past 12 months basically shielding. There has been a a very small bubble of staff known as the HMS, uh, HMS bubble that have been looking after them on a, uh, a rotating basis. So it's probably the most time they've ever spent together, Michael, in their 73-year marriage. He is 99 years of age. He is the Queen's husband. He is the longest serving consort in British history. So there is naturally concern and interest uh, in his condition. But at this stage, still a lot of questions, very few answers. The last update of any sort we had was yesterday when Prince William, his grandson, uh, was asked by a veteran royal photographer, Arthur Edwards, at an event, uh, how's your grandfather doing? He said he's OK. The doctors here are keeping an eye on him. So hopefully, Michael, uh, that remains the case and he is OK. Indeed. All right. Sarah Greenolch in there in London. Thank you for that. Still to come, the legacy of a legend, the push for AFL research in memory of Danny Frawley. The Brisbane woman making history leading NASA's latest Mars mission. The face of bravery, how this little boy is stealing hearts. That's all next, we're here on the latest from 7 News, back shortly. The celebrities and the kids are coming together. This is amazing or what, Servo? Sunday, these stars thought they'd done it all, but nothing like this. Oh! Then Monday... The kids make the putts. The parents take the hits. Two massive nights of extreme family fun. This is Holy Moly! Sunday and Monday on 7. Come see our range of shower screens, a touch of luxury for any bathroom, mirrors to create the illusion of space, and glass splashbacks that add style and colour. Let our experts help you match the perfect product to your lifestyle. Call or visit Dabsco today. Congratulations to the Territory's Young Achiever Award winners. Ebony Carpillo, Young Carers Award. Claire Chandler, Regional and Rural Initiative. Jack Gumbula, Aboriginal Educator.
Madison Clonan, Agriculture Award, Joel Benicia, Innovation Award, Olivia Shields, Career Achievement, and Claire Chandler was named NT Young Achiever of the Year. The Young Achiever Awards are proudly supported by founding partner and prize patron TIO and Seven Darwin. Oh look, we were old school. We didn't do digital marketing. With local search, they help me, they guide me through the transition. We've gone from one vehicle to 18 vehicles on the road. They made life easy for us. Phone 13 Taxi, Darwin's truly local blue taxi company. Each vehicle with COVID safe vehicle cleaning, in car CCTV monitoring, satellite tracking, direct to the Blue Taxi local response team. Track your booking on the Blue Taxi phone app. Darwin's own Blue Taxi Company also offer minibus, coach and private hire car services. Phone 13 Taxi. Oh, duh. Elegance and glamour. Love your shape. Love your size. Available at Sarah Lynn Lingerie and Fashion Boutique, Shop 3, Milner Plaza, 348 Bagot Road, Milner. One of the most important things about cooking is a good set of pots and pans. They will make your life so easy and they're built to last. Get Diamond Earth, the all-new non-stick cookware collection from Clever for faster cooking and easier cleaning. Make amazing meals for the whole family. Cook salmon skin down, no fats or oils. The secret is in the German-engineered C3 Greblon coating, guaranteeing perfect non-stick performance with no hotspots. Diamond Earth's German technology is built to last. Don't pay over $500 for a top-quality cookware set. Call 02 9387 or get to cleverrange.com.au. Get the 24cm fry pan and casserole pot, the 20 cent a fry pan and saucepan plus the soft touch lids and 10 year guarantee for just $249. Order now and get this fast and fresh steamer plus free postage anywhere in Australia. Only the first 50 orders get this three piece clever cut knife set nearly $100 in value absolutely free. Get the whole set steamer free postage and knife set. Call now and don't miss out. Could you be next to win big on Sunrise tomorrow? Welcome back. A Victorian coroner is urging AFL players to help with brain research after revealing details of late AFL great Danny Frawley's death. Our sports reporter Tom Brown's in Melbourne for us tonight. Tom, good to see you again. So what did the report into Frawley's death actually reveal? Michael, the coroner has given a revealing and quite confronting insight into Frawley's final few days. But from a CTE perspective, which is this brain condition, she has, as you mentioned, encouraged players to contribute their brains to research because she found that Danny's depression, there might have been a contributing factor which involved the CTE. Importantly, the coroner found that there were multiple factors behind Danny's depression. They included losing his job at the Coaches Association, his star power, his media career diminishing in the end, also relationship trouble. But quite significantly, she's found a potential link between depression and this brain condition which Danny experienced. He had 20 concussions or so throughout the course of his career, including five hospitalisations. So there's documented evidence of these concussions and the coroner thinks it's an area of important research. So Danny's most enduring legacy might be to come in terms of further research and knowledge in this complex area, Michael. It is indeed. You know, Tom, you would know this. They did this in America with NFL players and it's revealed so much about CTE. But what, what do we know about CTE in Australia and, and why the push for further research? Well, the coroner has officially found in these findings there's a lack of knowledge at this time in Australia and overseas in terms of the effects of CT. And part of the reason for that, Michael, is you can only diagnose it, and Danny had low-level CTE, mm. post-mortem through an autopsy. So it's very hard to link a change in behavioural patterns throughout someone's life to when they suffer the CTE because they don't have a lot of research or knowledge until you've passed on. That's why the coroner wants there to be more research in this area. While we have you, Tom, AFL fans are a bit unhappy over a controversial new rule change. 
We know, Michael, a lot of AFL fans don't like a change in rules, but there's some vision that's gone viral today of an application of a new rule. It's the man on the mark rule where the player on the mark can't move laterally at all. There's no grey area. It's designed to encourage the player with the ball to swing out and take on more attacking play. The idea it could improve scoring. Now, not all fans are pleased with this, but the umpires are out teaching the players the rule. And I think it's just an adjustment process that the AFL certainly hope will see an improvement to scoring this season. The coaches, Michael, like their defensive structures and not all of them are sold on this rule. So it's a bit of a clue that it perhaps already might be working. We might see some more attacking football this year. All right. Good on you, Tom. Tom Brown in Melbourne. Thank you. Remarkable footage and audio has been unveiled from the Mars Perseverance rover behind NASA's $2.2 billion journey to the Red Planet is a woman from Brisbane whose invention could change everything we know about our solar system. Angela Cox spoke with Dr Abigail Allwood, the first woman and the first Australian to lead a mission to Mars. Now, after years of hard work, what was it like finally watching the Perseverance rover land on Mars? It was astounding. I think in the run-up to landing, I had been, I had been uh, sort of dismissing the idea that uh, that it that it wouldn't land. You know, it might not land. It might not be successful. I thought there's no way it's not going to land. These guys will nail it. They've done it so many times before. So I didn't really get that too worried, um, unlike some of my colleagues. <laughs> but then when it was sort of going through that checkout of checkpoint of list list of things that you need to check off, a like parachute deployed, you know. Uh, crew stages are gone away and blah, blah, blah. But, oh, thank goodness the parachute deployed. It might not have, you know. It was like, OK, there's a lot of stuff that had to go right here in order to get this safely down. And that was just astounding just to watch it all happen. So much more this time than even last time. It was just incredible. All these things went right. And so to get all these surprises from these amazing pictures and videos that you're getting back now, I mean, your mind must just be blown. Oh, it is. It's absolutely amazing. And to see so much stuff, I mean, this, this could all be Earth. It looks so familiar and yet so alien. So you are the first Australian, but you're also the first female to lead an aspect of this mission to Mars, which is an incredible achievement. Does space exploration need to be more accessible for women in our society? Absolutely. I think, well, uh, I think to young people in general, but particularly in women. For me, it was when I was growing up, there was, there was enough obstacles to, uh, to this kind of career that uh, I think when I was watching uh, uh, a television show about science, about the return of the Voyager mission uh, images, and I saw a woman who was presenting uh, this and talking about her experiences seeing those data come back from Voyager in, this, in the 1970s. And just seeing her was like, wow, click, ding, a woman can do this. So that was, you know, you can actually get paid and you can do this. You can use this for a career. It's not just something you had to do in your hobby. It was, uh, it was actually. That was, that was very informative for me and my decisions later in life. Well, it's quite remarkable. You're this, you know, you're this girl from Brisbane and now you're yeah. part of this. Um, you know, what is that like for you? It's, uh, I don't think about it every day. It's, it's, um, I just still feel like the girl from Brisbane. I did not set my sights on this. This is not something I would even have imagined that would be something, I, something that anybody, let alone me, could achieve. So it's just, it's just something that along the way I just made decisions that seemed to make sense at the time and I was having fun and I was doing good science, what I thought was a good science anyway, and it, it landed me here and, and I think it's it's taking opportunities as they're open before you. I did, I did deliberately take a choice to do geology because I knew that Mars was a rocky planet and I knew I had to know, know about rocks in order to study Mars. So. So I know you can't give away any of NASA's secrets, we accept that, but from what you're saying, it certainly sounds like this trip and the information that's been gathered is really profoundly going to change and add to what we know about the red planet. I have no doubt of that at all. I think it's going to be, whatever we find is going to be absolutely, it's, it's going to shape the way, it's going to shape the sorts of ideas we have in our heads as we come to the breakfast table in the morning, we think about our own planet and about all the other planets out there. That's what it's going to do. Well, thank you so much for your time and joining the latest tonight, Dr. Abigail Orwood. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, still to come, Gemma will be back with a look at the day's markets and why this little boy is tonight's final frame. That's next here on the latest from 7 News. See you in a minute. Each dose is just 0.3 of a millilitre. Six drops of hope. 
to give us back our way of life. The COVID vaccine rollout is the biggest in our history. And Seven News will be there for every step with all the critical information for you. Special coverage at six. There's an easy way you can boost your business, keep money in this community and help Australia thrive. Sounds too good to be true? Actually, it sounds like your local Channel 7 station. Advertising with us will help you easily access your customers, letting them know who you are and what you do so they can help support you. We reach this community every day and so can you. Advertise local. Head to sca.com.au slash advertise local to find out more. Oh, look, we're old school. We're old school. We didn't do digital marketing. Now with the younger generation coming through and building the business for my family, we, we need digital marketing. With Local Search, they helped me, they guide me through the transition. We've gone from one vehicle to 18 vehicles on the road. They made life easy for us. Coming up, get our best-selling every comfort pillow absolutely free. Do you struggle trying to get regular sheets on your bed? Then you need Royal Deluxe Dream Sheets. Luxuriously designed with an extra deep 50 centimetre drop, these hotel quality bed sheets are guaranteed to fit every size bed or your money back. Available in 100% cotton or super weave blend. The secret is in the Dream Weave technology, the perfectly matched thread count and the extended 20 centimetre wall with easy slip fit design. Stop the tug of war trying to make your bed. Call 02 9387 4100 or get to supersleeperpro.com.au and get the extra long fitted sheet and flat sheet plus two pillowcases. Available in your choice of fabric with our exclusive fit any bed or your money back guarantee. Plus free postage anywhere in Australia. Be one of the first 37 orders and we'll double the whole offer. Order right now and get our best selling every comfort pillow. With adjustable filling it helps you keep cool and comfortable. It's yours free. Call now or go online and don't miss out. Harvey Norman, your destination for the new Samsung Galaxy S21 series. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 128GB for $0 up front when you sign up to a new Optus $65 per month SIM-only plan for 24 months. That's right, sign up to an Optus $65 per month SIM-only plan for 24 months and get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 128GB for $0 up front. Offer ends February 28. Galaxy S21 series, now at Harvey Norman. Darwin Day Surgery. Why leave the territory for elective surgery? Darwin Day Surgery is private, confidential and stress-free. National quality and healthcare standards accredited. Call for a streamlined appointment. Darwin Day Surgery at Casuarina. Bedmatch at 40 Winks takes the confusion out of buying a bed. And right now, get any size mattress for the price of a single. That's a queen, king or super king mattress for the price of a single. But hurry, end Sunday. 40 Winks. Serious about sleep. When you choose RSPCA approved, you're supporting Australian farmers who give chooks more room to move, pigs the creature comforts they need, hens the freedom to scratch and perch, turkeys a better home, and who raise salmon with a focus on welfare. So to ensure your food has been farmed humanely, always choose RSPCA approved. It's outrageously beautiful. Just amazing. Welcome back. Take a look at these amazing pictures behind me. Europe's most active volcano, Mount Etna, spewing ash into the night sky. We're going to leave those shots up whilst we have a look at the temperatures around the country. Uh, Sydney highs of 25, Melbourne 20 with some cloud around 32 in Perth. In some other parts, Longreach, high of 40, Albany 22 and showers in Foster. Now Gemma Acton's back with a look at the markets. Well, Michael, it was a soft start to the day, but Aussie shares soon recovered with energy shares among the biggest winners on continued oil price strength. Wall Street will be hoping to break a five-session losing spell. And initial indications are promising. It has been tech stocks leading the slide as investors bet inflation will rise more quickly than expected and prompt interest rate rises before long. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's speech overnight will be closely watched for his views on the topic. Both oil and 
gold have been picking up steam today and it has been a strong session for the Aussie dollar, cracking through 79 US cents to reach its highest level in three years. Michael. Gemma, thank you. Well, now for tonight's final frame. This is the face of bravery, there's no doubt about it. Malu Hunt, a toddler from Geelong, has performed the most impressive recovery. Since he was a baby, little Malu suffered up to 100 serious seizures every day. So, surgeons at the Royal Children's Hospital decided to perform rare and dangerous brain surgery to detach one half of the little boy's brain. Seven months on, Malu is making his mischievous mark on the world. Incredible little fella. That is why he's the face of the hospital's Good Friday appeal, proudly supported by Seven News too, and why little Marlow is tonight's final frame. Thank you for your company this evening. From the team here at Seven News, that is the latest. I'm Michael Usher. Have a good night. Previously on Station 9.